In this video, I want to talk about index of hydrogen deficiency, also known as degrees of unsaturation. So let's consider butane. Butane is a four carbon alkane. Alkanes are filled with hydrogen atoms to the max. They're fully saturated. Alkenes, alkynes, they're unsaturated compounds. They have less than the maximum number of hydrogen atoms that they can bear. So therefore, alkanes typically have an IHD value of zero, since they're fully saturated. Butane has the formula C4H10. To calculate the IHD, or the degrees of unsaturation, it's equal to 2N plus 2 minus the number of hydrogen atoms divided by 2. N represents the number of carbon atoms. So we have four carbon atoms. Therefore, N is equal to 4. And we have a total of 10 hydrogen atoms. So 2 times 4 is 8. And we know that 8 plus 2 is 10. 10 minus 10 is equal to 0. So butane has an IHD value of 0. Now what about butene? Here we have 1 butene. What is the IHD value for it? And now keen with one double bond has two less hydrogen atoms than their respective alkane. So one butene has two less hydrogen atoms than butane. Whenever the number of hydrogen atoms decrease by two, the IHG goes up by one. So whenever you have a single double bond, one double bond that is, the IHD value will be one. One butene has a structure CH3 dash CH2 dash CH and CH2. There's two hydrogens at the end. There's one hydrogen here. There's two on this side. And the methyl group at the end has a total of three hydrogen atoms. So this molecule has a total of eight hydrogen atoms. It's C4H8. Using the formula, it's going to be two times four plus two minus eight divided by two. So 2 times 4 is 8 plus 2, that's 10. 10 minus 8 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So a double bond has an IHD value of 1. Now what about a ring? What is the index of hydrogen deficiency of a ring? Let's use cyclobutane. Now carbon can only form four bonds. This carbon already has two bonds. It's attached to two carbon atoms which means it has space for only two more hydrogens. So every carbon in this ring only has two hydrogens. So therefore, the chemical formula for cyclobutane is C4H8. There's only eight hydrogens, which is very similar to the structure, or it's the exact same molecular formula of 1-butene. Therefore, this molecule has an index of hydrogen deficiency of 1. So we can say that a ring and a double bond have an IHD value of 1. Now what about a triple bond? So let's say if we have 2-butene. What is the IHD value of this compound? So we have 4 carbons and 6 hydrogen atoms. So using the formula, it's going to be 2 times 4 plus 2 minus 6 divided by 2. We know that 2 times 4 is 8, 8 plus 2 is 10, 10 minus 6 is 4, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So the IHD value is 2. So a triple bond has an index of hydrogen deficiency of 2. Now let's work on some examples. Go ahead and calculate the IHD value of these three different compounds. So there's two things you can do. 
You can count the number of hydrogen atoms in each molecule and then use the formulas to calculate it. Or you can just count the double bonds and triple bonds and rings and you could find it that way. So let's do it the easy way for the first three compounds. And the last one, we'll confirm it by actually finding the molecular formula and using the equation. So let's begin with the first one. We know that a double bond has an IHD value of 1. So since there's three double bonds, the first molecule has an IHD value of 3. Now the second molecule has two double bonds, each with an IHD value of 1, and a triple bond, which has a value of 2. So the IHD for the whole molecule is equal to 4. For the last one, we have a ring, which is counted as 1, a double bond inside the ring, which is 1, and a triple bond. So the last one also has an IHD value of 4. Now what I want you to do at this point is pause the video and count the number of hydrogen atoms in its molecule and write the molecular formula. Then use the equation to calculate the IHD value. And then unpause the video when you're ready to see the solution. So let's begin. Now keep in mind every carbon atom likes to form four bonds. This carbon at the end has three bonds. It's attached to a triple bond, which means that it has space for one hydrogen atom. The next carbon atom already has four bonds. It has one bond to the left, three bonds to the right, so that's four. It doesn't have any hydrogen atoms attached to it. Here we have a tertiary carbon with three bonds, so it has one hydrogen atom. These two secondary carbons have two bonds, so they both contain two hydrogen atoms. This particular carbon has three bonds. It has a single bond above and a double bond below it. So it has only space for one bond. The same is true for the other carbon atom below it. So how many carbon atoms do we have in the structure? So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's C7. And let's count the hydrogen atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogen atoms. So it's C7, H8. Now using the formula, it's going to be 2n, 2 times 7, plus 2, minus the number of hydrogen atoms, divided by 2. 2 times 7 is 14. 14 plus 2 is 16. 16 minus 8 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is equal to 4. So you have two ways of calculating the IHD value. Let's try one more example. Go ahead and calculate the IHD value of this particular compound. So looking at the left, the ring has a value of 1, and each double bond in the ring has a value of 1. So there's three double bonds in one ring. The benzene ring has a value of 4. This benzene ring has a value of 4. The triple bonds have a value of 2. And the double bond in the carbonyl group has a value of 1. So 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7, plus 2 is 9, plus 4 is 13. So this molecule has an IHD value of 13. Now what about if we have other elements? Let's say C5, H9, N. What is the IHD value for this? So on a periodic table, we have elements like nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine. Now, if you have, let's say, a halogen like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, you need to add one to the number of hydrogens for each halogen that you have. If you see a nitrogen atom or a phosphorus atom, take away one. If you see an oxygen, sulfur, selenium, or any calcogen, it's going to have no effect. So using the formula, it's going to be 2N, 
that is 2 times 5 plus 2. Now we have 9 hydrogen atoms and we have 1 nitrogen atom so we got to take away 1 from the number of hydrogen atoms. 9 minus 1 is 8 so we have 8 effective hydrogen atoms. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 plus 2 is 12. 12 minus 8 is 4 and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So this is the answer. Let's try another example. So what if we have C7, H9, Br, 3. Feel free to pause the video and go ahead and calculate the number of degree of unsaturations that this particular molecule has. So using the formula, the IHD value is going to equal 2 times the number of carbon atoms, which is 7, plus 2, minus the number of hydrogen atoms, which is 9. And we have 3 bromine atoms. So we need to add 3 to the number of hydrogen atoms. So we're going to put plus 3 in brackets, divided by 2. So we have a total of 12 effective hydrogen atoms. 2 times 7 is 14, and 9 plus 3 is 12. 14 plus 2 is 16, and 16 minus 12 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So this is the answer. And I believe my math is correct. I don't think I missed anything. But if I did, just let me know in the comment section below. Now let's try another example. Go ahead and try this one. C7 H13 N2 Br3 So it's going to be 2 times 7 plus 2 minus the 13 hydrogen atoms now we have two nitrogen atoms, so we need to decrease the number of hydrogen atoms by two. And we have three bromine atoms, so we got to add three to it. And we're going to divide the whole thing by two. Two times seven is 14 plus two, that's 16. 13 minus two is 11. 11 plus three is 14. And 16 minus 14 is two. Two divided by two is one. So this is the answer for that example. Here's another one we could try. C14, H21, P3, Cl6, O4. So we have 14 carbon atoms, so N is 14. Let's add 2 to it. There's 21 hydrogen atoms. Now for phosphorus, we need to take away one. So we have three phosphorus atoms. We need to take away three from the number of hydrogen atoms. We have six chlorine atoms. So we got to add six. And for oxygen, it's going to have no effect on the IHD value. So we don't have to do anything to it. Two times 14 is 28 plus two. So that's equal to 30. 21 minus three is 18. 18 plus six is 24. 30 minus 24 is 6, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that's the answer. So you might be wondering, well, what is the point of knowing how to calculate the index of hydrogen deficiency? Why is that useful? How can it benefit us? This information might be useful whenever you're dealing with a problem where you have to like identify what kind of compound you have. If you've taken HNMR, I don't know if you're currently in Orgo 1 or in Orgo 2, but once you get to Orgo 2, and once you have to determine the structure of a molecule, and if you're given the chemical formula, having or understanding the IHD concept can help you to deduce the right functional group, which can help you to get the right formula. So let me give an example of this process. Let's say you have two compounds, C5H12O and C4 
H A O. Now, let's say you have information that one of these compounds is a ketone and the other is an alcohol. How can you use the concept of IHD and degree of unsaturation to determine which one is the ketone and which one is the alcohol? Now, let's draw a generic alcohol and a generic ketone. A ketone, that is if you have only one carbonyl group, the IHD for a ketone is at least equal to 1, and the IHD for an alcohol is equal to 0, because there's no double bonds, no rings, no triple bonds. So all you got to do is calculate the IHD value for each one, and then you can tell what functional group is present. So let's start with the first one. It's going to be 2N plus 2, so N is 5, minus the number of hydrogens, and for oxygen it has no effect so we don't need to change the number of hydrogen atoms. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 2 is 12. 12 minus 12 is 0. So therefore, we have an alcohol on the left. Now, this can also be an ether, too, because an ether doesn't have any double bonds or rings, at least a normal ether. So we could have an ether like this, that can have a formula of C5H12O, or this could be an alcohol. Now what about C4HAO? By elimination, we know this is a ketone. But if we use the formula, it's going to be 2 times 4 plus 2 minus 8 divided by 2. 2 times 4 is 8, which cancels with this 8. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. So that's the ketone. It can also be an aldehyde. An aldehyde also has an IHG value of 1. Both functional groups have a carbonyl group. So that is it for this video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.